find a nice stalk, give it a twist, and then we'll cut the leaves off and put the leaves in the compost because the leaves are toxic. Huh. Some of the other things growing in that bed right there, that's um, horseradish. horseradish. Right? You can eat the leaves. It's very hot, you know, a nice green, spicy green. Or dig up the roots and grate it to make horseradish. There's um, a type of onion there called potato onion. The last of this year's spinach. So there's a patch of spinach there which you can harvest the fresh leaves from. There's also in here, and this is the last of them, but some um, beets um, called red cylinder beet. Those are our garlic. And you harvest them when they get to this stage, when they're about halfway up brown, and that tells you that the cloves have formed, um, or the bulbs have formed. This plant here, this is kamut. This is um, Egyptian wheat with the long awns on it. It's just blooming now, and that'll get harvested probably sometime in mid to late July. This bed here is a little bit different. Most of these beds were done by the John Jevons method of double digging and incorporating compost. This one is just the opposite. What we did is we buried a dead pine tree, piled brush on it, and then put dirt and compost on top of that, and it's called Hugelkultur. It comes from Germany, and it's also what nature does. So it's building soil out of the decomposing um, carbon in trees and shrubs. Then, so this is where we planted some of the perennials, because that one we can't dig up, you know, replant every year. But it's got chocolate mint, a little bit in here of some English thyme. And this is another type of mint called apple mint. It's the traditional mint for mint sauce and jelly or also to make mojitos. Mm. This is how we start all our little seedlings. We have to put it under the cover because otherwise the birds will nibble them when they're just coming up. But um, I can see some of them like that flat, that they're ready to plant. So we'll be planting these into the beds this weekend. Down here, you like those flowers? Canterbury bell. It's not edible, but they're my favorite flower. So <laughs> I grow them because I love them. And they come in shades of pink, purple, and blue. These, they're not edible, <clears throat> but they're absolutely gorgeous. We have people come out just to take pictures with them. Because when they're in full bloom, they're really a sight. These take a really long time. I just got my next mm. year's seeds. I start these, the seeds in July, and it's a biennial. It grows through the winter, and then the next summer is when it blooms. So after it blooms, it, it will die. It's not a perennial. But, um, grapes. So this is a, um, it's called Marichal Foch. It's a French-American wine hybrid that produces delicious cherry, red berries, um, and it's also highly disease resistant, so it, you don't have to spray it. Rao Ram, a spicy herb. This one tastes like black pepper and cilantro. Um, oh, you eat the leaves? Yes. Delicious, like diced over potatoes. Um, traditionally, it's used in Vietnam, Vietnam in the pho soup. Mm -hmm. And also in China, they use it in some of their chicken dishes or in spring rolls. Um, a pretty edible blue flower, tax beneficials into the garden is the corn flower, these are blue bachelor button flowers. And then these little plants in here are various types of crucifers. There's some broccoli, cauliflower, and maybe some cabbage. This is a really fun bean, it's a perennial. So you plant it once and you have it from year to year. It's the scarlet runner bean. Some red amaranth in here. Redhead of uh, redheaded cabbage, chamomile on um, the very last of this season. A nice patch of turnips. The these are the peppers that stay held over from last year. They may survive. The onions, the mm -hmm. cucumbers growing in here. They're not quite up on the trellises, but they'll come along. This is another um, medicinal herb. This is St. John's wort. Oh, yeah. You got some stickers here, right? That's, um, that's a weed, isn't it? That's, yeah, sticker, yeah, the sticker weed. Yeah, the, so those the, yeah. 
I'll, I'll help you yeah, with Yeah, we just pull those up when yeah. we see them. Um, that's nettles. Um, and then... It's used as a spring tonic. It's used medicinally. People either, they'll make it into teas also. It's rich in minerals. Um, they're actually very yummy as green. You know, very fresh yeah, when they're like spring here. green. Mm -hmm. The tops, yep. they're really good flavor. I love the flavor. I happen to love their flavor. Yeah. And then tucked in here, this is comfrey. Mm -hmm. um, and then oh, lemon balm. I'm quite familiar with that one. It's very nice. It's great in tea or just chopped up fresh. Maybe put in a, a little bit of rice and get, or, or into a dressing. It's very nice. Here's some meat. And then our squash. Another plant, too, which we kind of have to go Greek mountain tea. Are you interested in seeing that? It's a little gray, round cover that produces a flower. You harvest it, the buds, you know, the flower stem, make a tea with it. Oh, it's like, that we call it's that lamb's ear. Lamb, mm -hmm. But it's cideritis. Syriaca comes from Greece. Very good for promoting a healthy immune system. And here's the plant. So the tomatoes at this stage are the varieties that we show over here. These are two for five. And then um, these were the Canterbury bells. There's a few left of those. Those are three for five. And then the perennial ones, the artichokes, the grapes, the herbs, the rosemary, yarrow, chives, mints again. Sage. These are five dollars each. So if you're interested in herbs, pick a leaf off one of those little anise pieces. And you're familiar with the flavor of anise, but it's mm -hmm. just about the sweetest, most gentle anise oh. flavor. Um, very nice herb. It's perennial. It has purple flowers in the summer, so in about a month. In fact, I think the one we have planted over there is starting to produce a little flower. Really attracts bees and beneficials. That's like candy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm. American native, the Indians, American Indians used to use it a lot. Um, mm. Some other plants in here, more asparagus, some leftovers of some of the plants. So if you're holding the vegetables, this is that. The last of our artichokes for the spring, and then we'll get more in the fall. This is where we had a big patch of fava beans, and I'm going to um, fix that up for planting today. Over here, of cauliflower, sunchokes, dandelion greens, and then I think there's some more, um, they're just young though, of some um, cucumbers down that way. Oh, and then the tomatoes are in, they're just flowering, but no fruits yet. This is European wheat, it's called um, Maris Widgeon. It's a very old style wheat that was grown in France and England in the late 1800s, and it's grown a lot of it is grown because of it has really long stems. And that's great for that. They used to use it for thatching the roofs and then it produces a grain that's suitable for making bread. In here, some radishes, a little bit of arugula, carrot. Um, some carrot, some parsnip, some more green onions, some really nice looking um, Swiss chard, gold Swiss chard. Another bed, because they do so well here, of the scarlet runner beans. Chicory. Chicory, yeah. Yeah, for chicory. chicory root coffee. It's a perennial, but we grow it for a full year until it comes into bloom. And then we'll dig up the roots, and this gentleman's going to make a roasted coffee substitute out of that. Epizote for Mexican cooking. If you cook, just put a sprig of this in when you're cooking beans, it helps. Um, produce the enzymes so that you don't have gas with your beans. And then this is some bigger plants that I put in here um, of the anise Some kind hyssop. of sage? No? As anise hyssop. Some little tiny beets. And yeah, they look a little small, but we can look. Um, beautiful, edible English lavender. And this is perfect at this stage for harvesting. You want to harvest it just as it's about 10% or just starting to open up their flowers. And it's highly fragrant and also edible. It has a really nice flavor with no bitterness. Yellow ginger. So you can oh. harvest it for the yellow ginger root. And it's also pretty. Um, it has white flowers, kind of late in the summer. 
and it's a perennial, so you plant it once and it's hardy. It's a, it's a hardy ginger that it might get killed back a little bit by the frost, but it'll come back. Um, so it does well in our area. And edible flowers. Oh, and one more thing. It's kind of jungly, but if we walk through here. American sheep sorrel. It's great, like in just a little bit in salads. Really lemony flavor, rich in minerals and vitamins. And it's used medicinally in some cultures, um, again, to boost immune system and even fight off cancer. Where or how did you learn all of this? Just with a, you know, my lifetime of learning, I think. Um, I studied plant science. My degree in university was plant science at UC Davis. But then I've gone much beyond that because that was all really conventional agriculture. Mm -hmm. But you learn the basics, of course, like mm -hmm. nutrition, soil science, nematology, all that stuff. Um, but then just doing it. So a lot of practical experience. Another good resource is a company called, um, I think they've gone out of business now because they've been around for so long, okay. Bountiful Gardens, right? Yeah. They started out in Palo Alto and I think they might still be operating up in Willits. But um, there's a book that's very good called How to Grow More Vegetables. Um, it's in its ninth edition. And that was sort of the book that I first picked up probably around 1980. And um, I still yeah, follow a lot of what that book teaches. But this is really very um, different in that it's using you know natural minerals rather than chemi synthetic chemicals mm -hmm. and um, feeding the soil rather than just thinking about plant nutrition. Are you familiar with wormwood? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very bitter. Good, uh, it's really bitter. Yeah, it's super bitter. <laughs> it's good. It's good as a bitter. It'll get rid of um, all the worms in the air, right? right? Yeah, this is an edible rose. Um, it's an old-fashioned one. Cecil Bruner. Um, yeah, there's two of you. They're nice. It's edible as well as fragrant. You know, I grew up in Russia and in Soviet Union. So oh. we were sent as students in the fields to harvest things. Cool. And once we were in practice in Crimea and there were like fields of roses and we were sent to pick roses. Yes. So we were given like cotton here in the, in the U.S. We had this big, you know, bags over the shoulders and uh -huh. you go around and you snip the flower, snip yeah, the flower, put in the bag. Those. Yeah. And were they making rose water or what were they doing? Like For they oil, they're perfumes. pressing pressing oils and yes. also they actually do jams from yes, roses right, and rose right. petal uh -huh. jams it's middle eastern turkish right. turkish delight yes is, uh, absolutely that's where yes. it came from oh it's mm -hmm. delicious yes yeah, so that's pretty much the tour of the garden and i'm welcome to help you if you think you'd like to take something home today well, if you decide you just want one perennial plant or one big bunch of one item, it's $5. And then if you fill a whole basket full with, you know, and you may or may not, but if it's usually about seven or eight things will fill a basket, then that's 30 So there's a little bit of a volume discount.